Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Wendy. I wanted to fill you in on the details for the Cricut giveaway and here they are. This is open to anyone who has subscribed to my channel, um, new and existing. Leave a comment that says I'm in and we're going to announce the results on December 1st. Today we're going to be doing a project using a Cricut cutting machine. And we're gonna start off with this board that I got from Walmart for $14. It's ready-made, it's all put together, and it's very sturdy, so you can put anything on there that you want. We're gonna be making a Christmas sign, and I'm also using a yardstick, as well as a regular ruler for the smaller things we need to measure. Um, here's the Cricut machine. This is my personal one, I'm doing the giveaway. Um, with a brand new one. The cartridge we'll be using and then your regular weeding and squeegee tool, some scissors. The cartridge itself is called um, chalkboard fonts and I'll be getting into that a little more in detail in a second. I found this little saw, it was so cute, I actually got it to cut some wood pieces and for smaller jobs, but I love it so much we're gonna use that actually on the sign. And then to hang it, I got a few different options for you. You can use a screw, a long nail. I'm gonna be using this I hook and this S hook to hang it on the sign. Um, here's another option, it's just like a little L hook. I don't even really know what it's called. But we'll be using some white, red, green, and black vinyl. And the green and the red are glossy and those are Oracle 651. So those are permanent stick uh, adhesives on the back, whereas the white is the Cricut removable. So I wasn't real sure how that was gonna work, but it turned out because this is a very porous surface, the wood on there. Um, this black vinyl I got at the Target dollar spot and it doesn't say if it's removable or permanent. So we're just gonna try it out and I got it for a dollar so you couldn't really go wrong and we can test it out. And then also I just have a scrap piece of um, transfer tape and you'll see that with the Cricut it's kind of optional but I'll get into that more in a minute. This is the Cricut um, cutting mat so it's not like the Cameo, it's uh, more narrow. So we'll have to cut the vinyl down as well using the paper cutter. And then just the buffalo check ribbon and a chenille stem to make our bow. And then this is a Dollar Tree Charlie Brown wreath and we're gonna use that for some little stems that I'll cut off for the greenery. Um, and I also will do a project at the end with that wreath. So the next thing you're gonna need to do is um, Put a plan together as far as how you want your sign organized and the sizes and I'll show you how to do that in just a second. But as far as the colors and the way you want it organized, put that down too and I put it on like a brownish colored um, piece of cardboard so that I had a similar color to what I would be putting it on. This board is 16 by 20 inches. And so I'm trying to decide how large I want each of those different lines in my uh, sign. So here's the vinyl. We're gonna do the top line in black, which is gonna say, cut your own. And so you just slide it into the paper cutter and there's a lip there that you'll uh, rest it on to know that it's straight. And it needs to be six inches, which is the size of the Cricut cutting mat. So you take the protective cover off of the mat and then put your vinyl down and it's sticky so it'll stay on there. Now, when you get a cartridge for a Cricut machine, it comes, most of them all come like this and it comes with a book and then the actual cartridge itself. On the back, you'll see kind of a summary of the types of um, images that are on that cartridge. So in this case, it's a font. You can also get just die cuts and make it for, you know, they have different themes like a wedding or baby shower. So on each of the pages, it shows what each of the keys will give you based on what style you push. 
when we open the keyboard, I'll show you that as well. But you know, there can be a uh, different symbol just kind of hiding in a, a letter or a number, but they have the little flourishes, some um, uh, leaves and letters, small words in this case. And it also will come with a uh, shadow. So if you're making cards or something, you can put two different colors and have a backing. So on this machine, when you open it up, you're gonna feed in your cutting mat and you push load. This is the size of the font. The, the wheel will give you options. And then you have the speed and then the um, depth of how hard it's gonna cut. So in this case, the first word we're gonna cut out is the word cut. And you use it like a typewriter or keyboard and you push the shift button to get a capital and then just write out the word or type out the word cut and then you push cut um, and then it'll start um, cutting it out. That's a lot of cuts. But once it gets started, it will finish up and then you have to push unload to pull it out and then you'll see your word. Now, I always use this Cricut um, spatula. You've seen me use it so often, but this is actually what it was made for, is to get the letters off of the sticky mat, the cutting mat. So here's Cut Your Own, and I decided I was gonna change a couple things, but I'll show that again later too. But I'm gonna first mark out where I want my words to be put down. And the difference between the, one of the differences between the Cricut and the Cameo is that you're doing the letters one by one. You can use a transfer, a uh, piece of transfer tape or paper. Um, I'm gonna do that here just to show you the different ways that it can be done. But each letter is, it still has the protective backing, so it's, it's not sticky yet. So um, I'm just using the transfer tape to put that one letter to, or that one word together. And so I'm gonna now take off the backing. They're just basically stickers is, is what you're working with here. So then you take off the backing to make it uh, the, adhe the adhesive exposed. And on this particular font, it's got the, um, like if you're writing cursive, you can connect the letters or not, it's up to you. So um, again, I make some changes at the end, but you'll see that. So I'm going to line this up exactly on the left line and the bottom line of that tape, um, and then just rub it down there and get that in place. And then I'm doing the, the first word first, and then I'm gonna do the last word, because there's three words, cut your own. So just to make sure that my spacing is right after um, I get this all down, I can put your in the middle and it will be uh, perfectly centered. Now this is about as much as it gets as far as the weeding. That's another difference that you have between this and the Cameo Silhouette. So the weeding process is, is completely different um, and a lot easier. So here's the other, the last word, own, cut your own. And so pushing it down with the squeegee, I um, make sh making sure it's adhering to that transfer tape. And then I'll get that onto the wood after I pull off the um, backing of those letters. And then I take off the transfer tape and push it down really well again. And then you can see how much easier it is just to get that center word um, right in the middle of the two outside words. Um, I'm going to change that Y also because if you can see the O and the C are thicker and that was just, I was playing around with them and so I'll, I'll mess with that later. Now we're going to work on the Farm Fresh and I'm doing that one in white. And I haven't used my Cricut in quite a while, so I had to actually remember what to do. So the second time around, just like I said, there's always a learning curve. Um, it was much easier, so, so it went a little bit faster. But I'm now cutting out my different font um, for Farm Fresh. And this one has some like highlights. So this is a good time to use transfer tape to get um, all of those little intricate details onto your sign. The problem was 
I hadn't been to the Dollar Tree yet to get more transfer tape at the time that I was recording this. And thank you for everybody who told me to go to Dollar Tree and get contact paper to use as transfer tape. I now have a huge stock, trust me. Um, but right here I don't have any so and this one was really old so it wasn't sticking so I just had to go for it manually and I took them off took the sticky back off placed those letters down individually they were actually a little larger than I um, meant to make them but um, I love how they ended up looking so it worked out I just had to do the painstaking process of putting those highlights in one by one manually, but it ended up being worth it in the end. So now I'm going to do the trees and like we've already had two different fonts so far. So here's a third and these are all from the same cartridge. So that's a really good thing about Cricut is there's a lot of flexibility in what you get when you purchase just one cartridge. So I'm gonna go through the same process and this time I'm using a just kind of a straight line, almost a Ray Dunn looking font. Um, and so this is gonna say trees. And then I go through the same process with Christmas. This is the same font um, as cut your own, but um, I'm gonna put these down individually as well. And my spacing, as long as you can just kind of um, measure and put your tape where you're gonna want your letters that's all you really need to do so now I'm gonna put my um, hook in and this way I can hang my little um, saw and then I'm gonna see how big I want my bow that we're gonna be making and on this you're just gonna go back and forth and lay the ribbon on top of itself with um, so you'll end up with three loops on each side and I wanted the um, sides to kind of the little tails of the ribbon to hang over so I could um, kind of do them at a 90 degree angle so I'm using a chenille stem to put that bow together and then you just fluff out the little um, loops and get those all pretty and you'll have to do that a number of times because they always go back and when you're gluing stuff down it kind of messes them up then just dovetail the ends on both sides and put some hot glue in the corner quite quite a bit so it stays pretty sturdy um, and then just stick your fingers in between those loops so that you don't burn yourself but that you can get a good adherence to the hot glue and then on the tails I want to put those down but try if you're using buffalo check try to find a nearby black square so that the glue doesn't show through now this part I was really fighting doing this but I ended up doing it because I knew it was going to be so time consuming I went through each of those lines and made gave it a little like a corrugated look and I think it is so cute so here I'm going to take off a few of the little green pieces I'm running out of uh, greenery so um, I took three of them and this little tree is from the back of another video I did where it has the red truck and I liked it so much because he's natural wood and so I'm gonna use him to embellish this so I'm taking some jute twine and making a little bow again I used three loops on the side and a chenille stem and then I used the chenille stem the leftovers to tie those uh, green pieces together and then it becomes one one piece that I can then put on top of the tree using my hot glue. I have this leftover um, sprig and I wanted some berries and there were just enough to pull uh, three of those off and use for the middle of that jute twine bow. So I'm just gonna glue everything down, making sure that everything is um, adhered really well. Because after Christmas is over and we put these away when they're in storage, we don't want things falling off. Somebody had brought that to my attention, um, saying that hot glue just didn't seem to do the job for her when she pulled them out the following year. It was a big mess and things had fallen off. So now to give our sign a snowy look, I'm gonna take my Waverly white chalk paint and using the edge of my uh, foam brush, I'm going to just 
lay some paint on there. And remember, you can always add to this. Um, just do it as much or as little as you want to give it a softer edge. So now using this sweet gingham patterned uh, ribbon, I'm just gonna tie a little knot onto the handle and cut the edges at an angle and hang him from the hook. And here it is all done. I think it turned out super, super cute. But there was one thing that was kind of messing with me and you probably noticed it. Um, it looks like it says chit your own. So that C was a little too far up and I didn't like how that looked. I should have put it a different way. But I took my utility knife and just cut him off and gave him a rounded edge. And I think that made it way better. I also took my Waverly White chalk paint and gave the greenery a little bit of snow at the edges as well. And I think it turned out really cute. And now you have a place where you can go if you need to go cut down an extremely small Christmas tree. For our next project, we're gonna be using this can from the Dollar Tree. It's a galvanized bucket, I guess. Some nail polish remover and this uh, lamb's ear from Walmart, some Dollar Tree Christmas branches, and then a little bit of uh, greenery that I cut off from that wreath, and then some styrofoam. You can get this at the Dollar Tree. I just happen to have an old one that I'm gonna use. And then a whole bunch of these makeup uh, sponges from the Dollar Tree as well. These um, little ornaments, the smaller size, and make sure they're matte and not glittery or shiny. Um, this ornament, a little bit of jute twine, this gingham ribbon from Hobby Lobby, it was 50% off, so it was $3. And then this uh, scarf from the Dollar Tree. I never find these, but um, I did, I happened to this just by chance one time, so I grabbed it. But if you don't find it, you can also use this uh, dish towel I tried this uh, this project with it and it was super cute with it as well. Um, some Waverly White chalk paint, your glue gun, um, wire cutters, and scissors. So I started taking off the decal. I've seen this on other uh, channels, but it was just too much. It was too hard. And so since we're gonna be doing it as a solid color, I just didn't even take the time to do it. It was, and plus it was hard on my nails. So um, I just used a, the Waverly White chalk paint to cover up the can. If you were keeping it as a galvanized color or wanted that look, then you would have to go through the process uh, of taking it off if you didn't want it on there with the um, nail polish remover. So I'm just giving this one coat and then I take my small ornaments and I'm gonna get those ready with my uh, wire cutters and you wanna make sure it's the long kind. Um, just take off the holder, the hook holder, and then squeeze on that top just gently and then pull it and it will come right off in a perfect circle. And then using some scissors, there's a seam right down the middle. And if you go slowly and gently, it will kind of come apart on its own as you're going but you want to split those apart and if you lose some every now and then it's okay i mean you have plenty to work with and then using a sanding block from the dollar tree i just sanded it down to make each of those edges nice and flat so now i'm going to take some double-sided tape and put that on the edge of the makeup sponge and there's two ways to do this this is the first way and you just stick that inside of the ornament and then cut off the excess so that it's as flat as you can get it um, you have to kind of go back and do it some more this is the second way if you cut like about a third of the makeup sponge and then cut that third in half it comes out to roughly the right uh, height so that it stays flat. The reason we're even having to do this is because the hot glue will melt the ornament. So at one of those rounds where the, um, the ornament holder was, where we took it off, it happens to fit perfectly around the handle so you can maneuver right through there. I decided to use um, 
this uh, double-sided tape, and I don't know what kind it is. I've had it for a long time, so I can't tell you um, the brand, but it stuck, it, it held those really well, because um, originally I was using, for half of it, I used hot glue, um, and that was the reason for the sponge. You'll still need the sponge anyway to get a good adhesion, even if you do use the double-sided tape. But um, here it is all done, and then it was the perfect surface for a scripture, a Christmas scripture. So I did this on my Silhouette Cameo, and here you see the difference between the Cricut and the Cameo. Again, you can set up your own design and make it however you want, and it's all together. So you take off the vinyl after it's been cut and then cut it down so that you can work with it more easily. And then you're gonna pull off the top part, leaving just the vinyl letters and the saying. And then you need to weed out all the inside parts of the closed letters. And then the really small uh, letters are um, a little tricky, but sometimes you can use a straight pen instead. So here it is, for unto us a child is born, Isaiah 9, 6, and I love that scripture. And then you're going to take a piece of transfer tape, put it on top, and use your squeegee to get it down onto the transfer tape really well, and then transfer it onto whatever surface you're working with. Um, then take off the transfer tape very slowly and carefully in the case of smaller letters, but I lost my eyes the the dots of my eyes so i went in with a paint pen that i got from walmart and then just using the head of a pen i dotted my little eyes and then um it my sign was complete i also forgot to mention to turn your ornaments so that the holes that you had made um are against the bead next to it so they don't show so now I just took my styrofoam, stuck it into my can, and then I'm going to see how tall I want my uh, greenery to be, uh, to stand in there. So I cut those down with my wire cutters, and then I start placing them into the styrofoam. And I wanted to make it kind of nice and full. And then I'm gonna add the red beads, doing the same thing, cutting them down and cutting them off of the stem. and getting it kind of um, put in different spots so that it's nicely dispersed and it doesn't look you know like there's too much in one area and not enough in, in the other so then I'm gonna take the whole piece of styrofoam out and I'm gonna use my scarf to wrap it so it will kind of look like a bag but also serve as the filler for in there and so I just hot glued the scarf onto the styrofoam and then loosely wrapped it around so that there would be a lot of gathering and then I used a piece of jute twine to uh, tie a bow and hold it all together and then put it back into the can and here's how it looks and so also at the top um, you can cover up any mistakes or if there's extra glue if you used hot glue so now we're gonna make another bow and I end up not using this, but I'm gonna show you anyway because I'm gonna use it at the end. So again, three loops on each side, fold it in half so you can make sure you're in the middle um, with your pipe cleaner, chenille stem, whatever you wanna call it. And then <laughs> fluff up your little loops into a sweet bow. And here it is, it is it is cute and I do like it, but I just thought it was taking away from the scripture and I wanted that to be the center of attention. So I just, again, took another little piece of that ribbon, um, dovetailed the edges, and then I'm gonna add a um, piece of this ornament. You can deconstruct anything, it seems, from. Uh, the Dollar Tree. So I took some greenery, hot glued that down, stuck the little uh, ornament middle piece into it, um, and then added another piece. And here's how it turned out, and I absolutely love this.
so here's our last little bonus project i just added to that little charlie brown wreath some of this eucalyptus and i put like about three sprigs on each side i got that at walmart for two dollars and what you see on the wreath right there is uh, just one set so it's a really nice amount for two dollars um, next I'm gonna add the little gingham bow that we made um, for the the can but ended up not using so I'm just gonna hot glue that to the wreath and fluff him up a little bit to make sure that he's all perfect and and cute and then dovetail the tails and get those in the right place um, then i'm gonna use a ornament this ornament from the dollar tree and it comes apart and like i said you can deconstruct anything but i turned over the back so that it would be flat on the back but also to kind of make the cross a little more pronounced instead of just using the small part with the jewel so i'm going to hot glue that down and get him secured and then I wanted to add a little bit more to make the sides come around and be a little fuller so I added some more of the eucalyptus and then from the Dollar Tree they have these little foamy berries and I love him and I have not been able to use him so this was the perfect opportunity to use them they're a little off-white and they're so soft and cute and here he is on my blanket ladder I literally have him held up by two long um, glue sticks that I stuck in between the blankets but I think he is super cute and right above that if you remember this is what people are calling my roving tree from the roving yarns and if you I'll link that video in the description box if you haven't seen that but this is a super easy project that you can do in no time at all and there's hardly any supplies that you need you know so you can just take stuff off of your existing tree decor and make a coordinating little sweet um, wreath like this so i hope you guys really liked this video again i'm sorry it was long but if you haven't already i would love if you would subscribe to my channel and you can follow us on instagram and facebook I hope everyone has a blessed day and we'll see you next time. Bye.